Hey, so I'm gonna be showing you guys a few chord tips and tricks. I realized that when I had first started producing, uh, most of my tracks would be really chill, and I didn't know why. But as time went on, I realized it was because my chords usually follow the same kind of structure, and I lay those down first, and they just dictated what else I could put on the track. So I'll be showing you a few ways to add more bounce, rhythm, energy, drive. So when I first started out, I had a tendency to draw all my chords like this. And that is just, it's innately slow. Like these chords are good. And that has energy, as opposed to what you just heard. There's a big difference. So a lot of it just comes down to uh, more syncopated rhythms, more in between, like not just on the one, the three, the two, and the, you know, 2.3, whatever. Yeah, that auto automatically has more movement, more rhythm, more energy. And there's still a lot more you can do to it. So let's move to this one. Uh, adding this chord at the end. We'll bring it up. That gives it that kind of like sample looping feel. Because like a lot of people would trigger that higher chord at the end of the loop. And I like that. Uh, it's nice and I think it works partly because if you look at this it's the same notes right there so you're not adding too much in reality you're just adding this this F and this D sharp so if we got rid of all that yeah because these notes are already present right here I mean, not that one, but that that's chromatic to that, so it doesn't count as much. And this G is also chromatic to the F, so it's going back down into the F. Chromatic meaning one above or below, so it's going right back down. This D sharp is diatonically, you know, going to the C, and then you got the F, uh, same as this F. So this is, this is very... You want to use notes that are in the chords that came before and after, and it's just like very smooth sounding. Like that. That's perfect. Okay. And then we've got this one. I tried to start introducing some melody notes. I didn't like the way they were, but I'm just showing you the process. It's really about getting something down, and sometimes it's going to be something stupid, right? But then it's like, okay, I don't like these. It's this one specifically. So then we go to here, and I ended up putting it back down an octave and using it lower volume in conjunction with this bass note. Um, it's just kind of like a rhythmic thing. And yeah, I think this is nice, partly because these are all C's, so when you repeat notes, uh, when I first started, I wanted to put as many notes as possible as often as possible but it's a it's really a lot about repeating notes cuz you know you repeat it four or five times and it builds tension and it keeps it from feeling so random all right and then we'll go to one of the final renditions which the difference between these two is really it looks a lot but besides it looping once We'll do this for now. So look at the difference. I just added, like duplicated the chords for more rhythm.
beautiful. And when you look at these two, there's little no difference. This bass note ended up being the bass note for a chord that I put right on top. And this chord is actually this exact same chord. Just with the bass note put up an octave as well to fill it out. These are the same except I took away that F and that helps with the galloping feel because that's too stagnant. So if you take away a note, we could even do it with this one maybe. You feel that? It's not as good. That was the best choice because it kept the bass the same. But taking away this note, it really helped throw it forward. Then you add. That C just helps keep it keep it stable because the C is everywhere. I don't think it's in the key of C though. I mean, honestly, it looks like it is. And then this A, I mean, once again, we're really just trying to use the same notes, you know? You don't want to just throw random notes in all over the place. Uh, and then if you look at this, at this point, this note came in, which was completely new. Like, these Gs weren't in this beginning part. And then they come in on the second part and just kind of drive it forward, drive it home. And then this is just a like a bouncier. See, this one is good because this one is uh, it leaves some space. It's not too busy. It's a chord progression with a slight bit of melodic touch to it but it leaves space for an actual melody, a vocalist, beat, whereas this one... I just kind of took this chord progression, the original one, and threw like a low octave melody on, which might be a bass line or something similar. It's just like a fully fledged loop at this point, and I would add, you know, some ambiance up top, uh, drums, maybe a second melody that plays notes at the same time as these. I'll do something real quick. This part is beautiful. And there you have it. There's a one or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ways to make your chord progressions a little more interesting.